Hi, what's going on guys? My name is Enzo and today we are going to learn all the basics of Solidity. As of today, Solidity is the most used programming language for writing smart contracts. It was created by the Ethereum team in order to run programs on the Ethereum virtual machine. So all your Solidity code will be able to run on the Ethereum blockchain. But listen to this, virtual machines and programming languages are hard to develop and maintain over time. So many blockchains like Binance Smart Chain, Polygon or Avalanche have adopted the Ethereum virtual machine. This means you can write your smart contracts just once using Solidity and then deploy them to any blockchain that you wish. Sounds exciting? Let's dive in. I have set up a simple smart contract that details all the features we'll be talking about. At the very top of the file, you will find the license. One big part of blockchain is transparency. Your smart contracts will be more trusted if they are open source and the code can be visible in Explorer. This means you probably want to add a license so third parties know what rights they have on your code. My advice is that you use unlicensed until you need an actual license. Next, right below the license, you'll find the Pragma Solidity version line. This specifies the version of Solidity that your smart contract is using. Solidity is a language that evolves over time and adds and deprecates many of its features. Thanks to this line, you will be able to tell the compiler which features you are able to use. The version number uses semantic versioning. I encourage you reading really more about it. In my case, I'm declaring that my contract is compatible with Solidity version 0.8.0 and all the versions above that, but still under 0.9. Next, you have the contract keyword. The contract keyword enables you to declare a scope for your smart contract in which you will be able to place state variables and functions containing your logic. State variables may be of many different types. Some of them, you might know them already, like string and integers, but there are also types that are unique to Solidity, like address for representing Ethereum addresses. State variables can be declared and initialized at the same time or just be declared. They also have a visibility modifier. We'll talk about that later with functions. Then there are more complex types like arrays. Arrays can be accessed using integers to get values and they can also be assigned in the following way. Next, you have the struct type. Structs enable you to pack several variables under the same reference. In this case, I'm defining a transfer struct that contains two addresses and one integer. The way you create a struct instance is like this. You call the struct name as a function and you pass as many arguments as you have defined variables inside it. Structs can then be accessed using a dot notation and they can be assigned in the same way. Finally, notice that structs can also be used as array values. Upcoming next, you have the enum type. The enum type is helpful whenever you have a variable that can only take certain values. In this case, I have defined a transfer status enum that can take any of the following values, and it might be accessed in the following way, using the enum name, dot, and the value you might want to target. Up next, you have the mapping type. Mappings are key value stores. The way you define them is using the mapping keyword followed by the key type and the value type. Mappings can be accessed and updated using the same syntax than arrays, but using a key as an index. To conclude the type section, we need to talk about events. Events are a very cool type unique to Ethereum that is a built-in pop-up mechanism. Smart contracts will emit events during runtime and subscribers can subscribe to events in real time to react to them or look at on-chain history to handle previous events. The way you declare an event is using the event keyword followed by the event name and then as many arguments you want to be related to that event. Notice the index keyword that will be helpful for later filtering throughout the events. It works in a similar way than indexes in SQL databases. The way you emit event is by calling the emit keyword followed by the name of the event and then passing in the actual values for the arguments that you have defined. Up next, you have functions. Functions in Solidity work the same way that in any other programming language. They will run a piece of logic given a few arguments, if any. Functions may additionally include any of the keywords that you are used to for controlling the state of the execution, if, while, for, or return statement. I have set up four times a function that takes an address and updates the relayer address state variable that we define above. 
The only thing that differs from each of these functions is the visibility modifier we have talked about before. External functions can be called only from outside of this smart contract. Public functions can be called both from outside and inside this smart contract. Internal functions can only be called from inside this smart contract or any other smart contract that inherits this one, but we'll talk about inheritance in another video. And private functions can only be called from within this smart contract, but not from the ones that have inherited this one. Notice the leading underscore. It is a convention for private functions and state variables to have one. As we said before, state variables also have a visibility field. It is advised for every function and variable to specify explicitly which visibility they have. Up next, we have another unique property of functions in Solidity. This is the state mutability field. There are two values possible for this field, pure and view. Pure functions are the ones that do not read nor modify the state variables of the smart contract. View functions are the ones that read from the state variables but do not modify them. It is important to label your functions properly because it will enable you to save gas during runtime. Notice that this function also uses the returns keyword. This is a way for defining the type of value that the function will be returning. Functions in Solidity can also return several values like this. Next, we have our last function modifier that is unique to Solidity. This is payable. Payable enables callers of smart contracts to send Ether value with their transaction. Whenever a smart contract receives some Ether, it is automatically stored in its balance and it can then later be used to do whatever you please. This function does a lot of different things that we have already seen and some that are new. Let's break it down. The first thing is that we are grabbing the Ether value that is sent with the transaction. This can be accessed calling message.value. Next, we are checking that the amount that is being sent is valid. For that, we are using the function that we have just defined above and using the require keyword. Require will check for the condition given as the first argument, and if that's false, it will revert the transaction, sending as an error message the second argument. After that, we are incrementing the balances mapping for the address of the sender of the transaction, given the amount that it has sent. Finally, we emit an event to notify people that money has been deposited. And last but not the least, comments. Comments play a huge role in software development, but even more in Solidity. Whenever you deploy a smart contract to the mainnet, you won't be able to modify it anymore. So the code will live a very long life. This is the reason why it's important for it to be very well documented so everybody, both people that will call into it and people that will build on top of it, needs to understand what your logic is doing exactly. Comments in Solidity might be of a single line, multi-line, or they might follow Ethereum natural language specification format. I encourage you to read through the Solidity official documentation to learn more about the language syntax as well as its features. I will leave the link in the description of the video. And that's everything I have for you today. Solidity has many features to expand on, but I had to leave some of them out. Let me know in the comments which ones you would have added to this video and the ones that you want me to cover in the future. As always, please make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on and that you hit that like button. Until the next one, keep coding, keep smiling.